Okay, so let's get started for today. I wanted to take a look at this piece as well as this piece, talk about contrast and lighting. I haven't done a lighting, um, uh, you know, just all about how to stage lighting without changing too much of the illustration, just lighting, exclusive lighting talk um, in a while. So I'll be doing that today. But one thing I want to mention is drum roll, please. Everybody ready? The community challenge is out. Yay! Okay, so what it is, it's the spring community design challenge floral humanoids and you must read through it. I can't read through it for you, but you must read through it yourself. Um, and basically I'll read through the checklist. You're going to have to hand in three preliminary sketches, mood boards, references, inspiration, and collage. Um, a photo reference of chosen flower or flowers limited to two attached to the final draft and the uh, Latin names for the flowers as well as a narrative attached to the final draft that isn't too long. Um, so what is it exactly? So those flowers are you're going to use them to design an, uh, a humanoid, a character. Um, and you may use two flowers, no more than two, and you must show these actual flowers. They must be visible. Um, in the design somehow. Um, one, I'll, I'll be posting it and sharing it soon, but one of my followers on Instagram showed me some artists and how they've done this, you know, from their own creative uh, creativity. They've, they've made little flower people or plant people or petal people, and it's so adorable because, you know, you have the legs and arms with the whole anatomy of the flower is so cute. Um, and uh, another good movie that has something like that is the movie Epic. Um, uh, it's just a silly title <laughs> for a movie about plant people. Um, small, tiny little people who live in the, in the forest, little fairies, which I love. I love anything about that. Um, so that's a good place to get started if you have a movie inspiration you're looking for for this challenge. Um, it's going to roll in at the same time as spring, so uh, most likely I'll find um, uh, you know a time where it's around the first day of spring so we could do the critique hour. Um, I'm not sure if it falls on a Thursday or not. And, uh, and yeah, I hope you guys have fun with it. If you guys have not seen the previous ones from a couple years ago, please go uh, to my website and, um, sorry, to YouTube. You can go on my website if you want to get a shortcut to YouTube. And um, uh, click on the YouTube link here and look up in my video history, uh, just floral or humanoids, and you can see the challenges we've done in the past. So this is a repeat challenge. It's different format than the previous one, so it's not the same resource pack at all. Um, it's not in this, in the, you know, you don't have the same flowers um, or anything. You can just choose which flowers you have for um, for your for your design. That way we could keep things in high variety instead of just you guys drawing the same flower I assigned you. Um, we're giving you a selection of five or something. You can pick whatever one you want across the world. You can do aquatic flowers, so aquatic vegetation, um, whatever we can call it, flora and fauna of the coral world, I guess. Just you know, nothing deep sea or, or weird. Um, just whatever is still working with photosynthesis, so you get those beautiful greens and blooms and all of that. Um, zero mushrooms, no mushrooms, no. No mushrooms because you're just gonna draw a mushroom with legs that's all it's gonna be um, I mean maybe at, at most you're going to draw a little humanoid white thing silhouette of a person with mushrooms growing out of it and it's like many mushrooms so no mushrooms this time all right I don't want any little um, uh, Nintendo mushroom people uh, so yeah and um, the mushroom hat people <laughs> it doesn't take a lot of <laughs> creative energy to just add a couple eyes to a mushroom all right so no mushroom and no fish people it has to look floral it has to look like you put some thought into the texture of, of plants of roses of flowers of petals of the way they cascade or the way they fold of the way they layer um all of these things 
are a texture study. It's basically just testing your texture discipline, your rendering discipline, respecting references, not letting your hand get away with you and, and just you know, draw whatever it feels like drawing. No, it's not always a shadow of the thought of the object in your mind. Sometimes you just have to respect a reference and copy it as you see it. And then you have to put a little bit of thought, so you have to kind of be a a biologist or, or, or a herbologist here for a second think about how the two plants might combine if it's just a singular plant how you're going to incorporate its elements into um, uh, uh, the, the design and, 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 and how to make it function and mechanize as a, as a moving person as a moving being um, so good luck with that. Have fun. The the winners I and, and, the, and the rewards are as usual. So um, a copy of Portrait Studio, a copy of All My Brushes, as well as uh, being a guest speaker in uh, the next critique hour or the critique hour for the floral humanoids. Um, so I, I still want to get to know you guys. I still want to get on that and make sure everybody... Um, is having fun and, and and feeling like it's it's an it's an active community full of challenges and opportunities to meet people and build your gallery and build your audience um so uh, uh we have to get back on that took a little break because the first two months of the year are absolute chaos for me pure chaos um and i uh, feel like i can finally relax now and give you guys a challenge and get back into all that stuff because things are relaxing a little bit um Let's get into this critique hour today. So lighting, strictly lighting. I'm not going to talk about your character's design or anything. Strictly lighting. So we have a, an Anubis character here. I love, 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 love the fabric design on his um, on his sash and his tunic and all that. Uh, let's, his ropes. Let's talk about why this illustration is not working. Because honestly, your illustration is basically this. That's what we're seeing when we're looking at it. That's what we see. Um, this is because you're just, you didn't give us anything to work with. So he's supposed to be the god of the underworld or something like that. But there's no underworld, nothing's visible. I mean, he can't just be the god of a dark room. It's, eh, that's not good to, it's not good for the movie to just have a dark room and we can barely see what's going on. So how do they make dark scenes happen in movies? How do they make them happen in illustrations? Um, and it's a little bit like this, so. I'm going to brighten the background a little bit. That's step one. You didn't give us anything to work with. You didn't let us see anything. So now that we can actually build a silhouette, we can see. I'm going to save my silhouette, my lasso, so I don't lose it. And we got a couple things we need to do. The first and most important thing is just make him come out of the background a little bit. One thing we can do for that is the spotlight. So I'm just trying to find my spotlight brush. Okay, you can stop now, Photoshop. Um, and I'm just going to make it so that behind him as well as in front of him, we have a strong light. That'll just kind of bring him out of the background. So this seems like it's enough, but I also want to add a little bit more in the background. So I'm going to select and just dodge tool a little bit of the space behind him. All right. And then select that. so that we have two levels of silhouette behind him. we have the general light just so we can see the thing that's being filmed and that is epic and then we have um, the spotlight itself this is important this is an important character this is your cue to show it off so you have a lot of ways to interpret this um, this light it could be from the side um, it could be, you know, a hero landing or a bad guy landing. This light layer, I'm actually going to delete with a pretty textured soft brush, uh, cloud brush, sorry. Um, and I'm just trying to find it. And I do that because it creates this negative space that looks a lot like 
and a fog. So you don't actually have to paint in the fog, you delete in the fog. Right, so we have a really nice drowning light and we have the background behind him. And now we get to show a little bit more of his character. And what I'm doing now is I'm just finding all those little areas that might get that sheen. And then now I'm bringing in Dodge Tool on all the just the hottest spots. Oh, the audio. Um, from a distance, I'm going to try refreshing. I'm going to try to do a double layer effect here. I'm going to try to make it so the fabric that looks up at the light catches a little bit of the light, but I want to delete at it with blocking brush because this fabric is very heavy. So heavy fabric has a very uh, jagged geometric buildup to it, the way it folds, the way it moves. It's not like loose fabric or hair. Heavy fabric is clunky. Um, so it has this almost like rocky type of fold to it just like that you see that so that's that that does so much for for the uh for the illustration just that just showing that little edge so before after like it and you just let the brush do the work you let the brush keep do a messy job um oh i came offline i wonder why um am i back online Can you guys see everything? It kind of kicked me out of the stream for a second. He never left. Um, uh, Discord said I was offline. Okay. Um, well, we'll see what happens. And then there's an extra little middle section. So I'm gonna merge it down, duplicate again. There's an extra little middle section that's getting more light. And I'm just going to do that again. Copy, and go back to before. Oh, I don't need to do that because I already doubled the layer. And I'm just going to delete again just to establish that edge of the fabric. So we're not doing too much. We're just doing enough to enhance and move the fabric out of his shadow. Um, and uh, the best thing in situations like this where you have a really dark scene is to get the big shadows. Prioritize those. So in this case, the biggest shadow is his head uh, coming off of the, the, the spotlight. So I'm just going to let myself... Oopsie, I'm just not even on the right tool. Um, darken on highlights. Just really exaggerate that long shadow coming off of his head, moving down, and then the shadows. Oops, then mid-tone. So you go through each stage because that's the mature way to use dodge and burn. You go through shadow, mid-tone, and highlights. And I'm just trying to get that shadow to read. And so back to dodge tool. Dodge tool on mid-tones. And I just want to, again, encourage the presence of that long shadow coming off his head. And then with soft brush on black, pure black, I'm just going to continue that. And then right at the base, behind him on either side, since it's such a symmetrical image, I'm going to let some light hang out as well, just to build the horizon line and create space behind him so he's more visible. And the cast shadow of the, of the, uh, of the axe is really cool. You put that in there yourself, which I approve of. It's got my seal of approval. So we have before, after, before, after. Okay, so what are the changes you guys see? I'm not going to repeat everything to you. What are the main fundamental changes I did today that have to do with lighting? Uh, why did I do each one? So I'm going to ask them, why did I do the backlighting? Why did I light up behind them? You missed the before and after? Before. After. 
I'm not sure why it's kicking me out. Um, it, uh, I think it's a server issue because the internet seems to be okay on all ends. Before, after. Did you guys get the before and after now? Is everything working now? Lighting the background so we can actually see the character versus the background. But Dash, it's a dark scene. I want it to stay dark. I don't want to lighten the background. Is there a way to do this without lightening the background? I want, it, I want the audience to see that it's a dark room. Would they still see that it's a dark room? Paintings can have daylight values and still read as a dark room specifically because it's completely desaturated. So this goes back to the to beginning of time, to the well beginning of, of sophisticated art. Um, so when you had those illustrations of a night scene where a maiden was giving a flower to a, to a prince who snuck through the back, um, it's not, if you actually go in there and swatch all the values, it's not, it's midtones. They're not, none of them are dark. And you wonder why does it read as nighttime? Um, the light environment background color is a pretty dark value. The colors are all cooled or desaturated. That's the secret. So if you were worried about it looking too sunshiny and pretty and bright, and that's why you gave us a black canvas, you're wrong. Because you can use pure white in a black canvas in a, in, a, in a nighttime scene and it'll still look like nighttime. Yes, we threw a spotlight on, that's not the point. The point is out here. And the point is we still establish the same mood you have. Um, if you didn't like this mood, if you wanted to have some kind of ambient light to the scene, you could darken it some more. Um, and then you could just take over with a blue wash because when you have these colors as the main light source, you have to show how they are the, the, the source, the, the actual light source value, um, light source color and, and source of the, of the lights, like the, the light itself, the only primary in the scene, which means that it throws its color on everything. So if you wanted to keep that dark ambience, of course I wouldn't go this dark either way, um, and I would still do something along the lines of just that, finding a little bit of that ambience, keeping some of the light and taking down some of the spotlight at the top. But still, it still requires you to significantly change what you were doing before. All right. So I like the one with the spotlight since it's, it's pretty cool, but you don't have to obviously uh, keep it you can do the other one I like the direct light from the top maybe just a little bit darker just so that his eye glows come out all right so lighting isn't what you think it is it's not scary it's not uh, uh, as I mean, it does have its nuances and its rules but just do it just get into it and if you don't know what narrative to use for an illustration so you can practice your lighting knowledge and lighting skills do a form study abstract painting where you have form studies suspended and different cast shadows coming in from different areas which is a common um, diagnostic assignment one of the diagnostic assignments i give patrons is just a, a, a form study room that way there's no creative pressure but they're still studying lighting they're revealing their lighting skills that's a whole other thing. That's why it's a whole other guy they hire in movies just for lighting. Hey, lighting guy, what's the best way to, to make this scene work? Um, for this specific mood, this narrative, this style, this genre. Um, so it's a whole other field of knowledge you guys have to learn. I know it's a lot to learn. I'm going to stop here because I want to keep the, the videos um, on the shorter side. And uh, next class, I will be taking a look at this one. This one is, takes a little bit more work because... Um, there's a lot going on here uh, that I have to talk about and it'll head a bit over. Um, so to recap, um, if you are interested in joining the, 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 the community assignment, go to istabrak.com. Um, I have to cut it short because of the, it's, it's just completely uh, kicking me out. 
<clears throat> Sin City is a great example of using white in night scenes. Absolutely, I completely agree with you. Uh, this is so useful. I'm not uh, doing a dark scene right now and wondering why nothing pops. Uh, I'm doing a dark scene now and wondering why nothing pops. Uh, looks like I can use light values. Yeah, you can. You're allowed to use daylight values in a night scene as long as your color wash is cool. Remember that. Um, so go to istablack.com and click on the Reddit icon here. Please read through the community assignment. It's really, really fun. The, the, the submissions from last time were just unbelievable. Let me just take a quick look at them. I know I'm disconnecting, but... Um, and uh, you can't hear me, but it's okay, at least for the recording. So go to... Um, just Google uh, YouTube Floral Humanitis Frack and then just look through all the submissions that we saw. There were so many. Of course, the rules were a little bit different, um, but it's just really interested seeing it. This one was a little bit not really, uh, but it's interesting seeing the designs and the choices and all of that. This one was really cool. Um, the, the flowers were just growing out of her and the way they draped them and layered the petals, it actually looked amazing. Um, uh, and then this one was also great. Um, this one here was interesting as well. Um, it, it, sometimes beware, one of the biggest warnings I had for, for this challenge is beware that the petals look like a costume. Make sure they're not costume-like. Make sure they, they are attached or part of the anatomy. So this one was also really interesting. Looked a little bit costumey. But uh, but I think I split them up into two because there were just so many of them submitted. Um, and we talked about silhouette and how the silhouette has to read first before you jump in. Um, oh, humanoids part two. Was there a part three? Uh, this one was also really cute. They, the color was just adorable. And you can pick anything you want. So they picked two references here. And they worked with them and I just critiqued them talking about exactly what works, what doesn't, what feels like a costume and feels less like a humanoid. So this is real, you know, character design, creature design. Um, so yeah, make sure they don't look like a costume. But yeah, this is, this is pretty cute because it's just one big petal. Um, always make sure you think about, do they really need a nose? Do I'm just, am I just putting the nose in there just for my own um, you know, human vanity. Um, do they really need a nose? You know, how, how much do I show? Do I only need the eyes? Do I only need one mouth? Um, it's, it's, it's just multiple mouths, multiple eyes. It's, it's really fun designing humanoids because there's, you can break every rule as long as you have a head, two arms, and two legs. It's a different kind of character design because you don't have to keep all the anatomy the same. You don't have to have proportionate torso to legs. You don't have to even have arms. Um, it could just be two petals. And, and you have to think about the function and the purpose of how do they live, the pump, the, the purpose of um, the, 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 and how they walk. What are they, what tasks do they have to do? Do they, do they photosynthesize? Do they, kind of just walk their way out when, when the sun comes up out of their little holes and just stand in the sun? Do they have social lives? Are there male and female ones? What is it like? Um, and, and do your magic. Um, I can't wait to see them. Just make sure they don't look like costumes because that's when it's just difficult to critique it because it's just a costume design. A character design is not a costume design, okay? Remember that, write that back. Um, so have fun with them and I can't wait to see them all. I'll see you guys next class on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Thank you everyone for coming and uh, hopefully next time the connection is a bit better. Bye guys.